Hi guys, so Facebook changes and what they mean for you in terms of building your business using Facebook as a platform to do that. Now, if you right now are running a service-based business online using Facebook that's pushing a service or maybe a product this could apply to you too, and if you get scared every time there is a rumor about a Facebook changing algorithm or guideline or rule, then this training is absolutely for you. Now, the first thing I wanna to say to you is don't be scared of changes on Facebook. Don't fear them, strive to understand them. Now, I've created this video for you today so that you can understand the recent changes on Facebook, how they affect you and your business, so that you can know how to use them to your advantage rather than fear them. I've got some notes here because I don't wanna miss a thing and I want you to get the best value from your time today watching this video. Now, I don't claim to be a Facebook expert at all, but I know enough to have built a seven figure business using Facebook. So I know a few things and I work with some of the best experts in my brand that support me and my marketing. So I learn a lot from those people too. And the advice that I'm giving you today is based on what I know to be true. Now, in recent months, Facebook changes to guidelines and terms of use when it comes to Facebook and algorithm changes have been geared around increasing two things. One is security and the other is transparency so the user knows what it's being exposed to and can choose more freely about what it's exposed to. Now, I understand security better than anybody on Facebook and the importance of it because I was recently hacked which was an absolute nightmare. So if you received porn from me recently on Facebook, it wasn't me, I hope you enjoyed it, but it wasn't me that sent it to you. So I'm gonna go through some simple things now that have changed on Facebook and put it in layman's terms for you because I know that when Facebook make a change, it's not something they always make clear and they don't always put it in layman's terms in a way that's really, really easy to understand. So that's what I wanna do for you today. Number one is the info and ads feature change. Now this is for pages, so this is for your business page, not your personal profile, this is for your likes page. Now the, the recent change, the info and ads feature, means that other people can now view all of your adverts easily, even if they don't like your page, even if they're not in your target audience that you promoted that ad to when you created it. So, in layman's terms, if you've got a business page and you've got multiple ads running from that page and when you created it, you targeted 60-year-old men who are in the real estate business. Let's say that's your target market and that's where you targeted your ads specifically from your business page when you developed it. Now, before now, the only person that would have seen that ad is people in that target market, in that audience that you set up to see it. Even if I went across to your business page and looked at your page and scrolled down, that ad wouldn't be visible. It would only be visible on my newsfeed because I'm your target market. So it would have to land there by chance for me to see it. That's different now, that's changed. What that means is that people can go across to your likes page even if they don't actually like it, they can go over and find it and they can have a look at all the ads that you have running right now. So what does that mean for you in your business? Well, first of all, that's great because it means your ideal client can pop along to your page and see what ads you've got running, what freebies you're giving away, what services or offers that you have running as a campaign right now. But if you're somebody that maybe runs multiple ads for multiple different audiences, maybe has a business page that has a target market of multiple types of people, that could become confusing now to your ideal client. So I think it's really important at this stage to make sure for your business that any ad you're putting out there, because it's now easily accessible to everybody, it's absolutely in line with what you would want your ideal client to see should they visit your likes page. Because it used to be really easy to hide your ads. They were pretty much invisible from your likes page as a page. And they only came up in the newsfeed if you were the target market that you'd launched that ad to. 
that's completely different now. So there's a lot more transparency. It comes back to what I said about Facebook focusing on security and transparency. So it's really important you know that and it's really important you think about that when you're launching your ads and you're thinking about what you want people to see who are visiting your page. Number two, cross-posting to Instagram. This is also a new feature that affects your business page, your likes page particularly. So what that means now is that when you post a picture with some text or just a picture onto your business page, it's now going to give you the option to post on Instagram at the same time. Which is great, but the hazard for that is that it's encouraging you to cross post. Now, in my opinion, you need to be really careful to not use this feature to manage both platforms, pages, your likes page and Instagram. And the reason I would never do that is because what works on Facebook doesn't necessarily work on Instagram. It's a very different platform. Users expect a different experience. They expect you to be showing up in a very, very different way. This isn't an Instagram training, so I'm not going to go into exactly what that looks like. You can keep following me for more training on Instagram. That is coming up soon. But just know that although it's an option for you to use that, it's not necessarily the best way for you to build your Instagram. So what you don't want to be doing is getting sloppy and getting lazy and going, right, now that I can just click a button and put that on Instagram at the same time, I don't need to update my Instagram account as often because I know that not to be true. Number three. Number three is augmented reality ads. Now this is something that's very new and at the time of recording this, it's just in testing phase. So it might not be something that you particularly have the ability to use just yet, but I'll let you know what it is. So this allows you to now launch an ad from your business page that gives you the ability to allow your consumer to put their face into a piece of software that tests your product on their face in real time. So if you're somebody that has a makeup brand, for example, with different shades and different colours, if you're a hairdresser, a beauty expert, somebody that is promoting a product or service that your consumer would find it handy to try that before they opted into that, then this is gold for you. Because it means that you have the ability, or your consumer has the ability, to put their face into your advert and test different colours and shades and see how it looks on them before they buy from you. So this is absolutely fantastic. It's a brilliant opportunity for the right type of business and the right type of campaign. Now at the moment you'll see that people like, brands like Michael Kors are using this at the moment because they're in testing phase with Facebook on this particular thing. When it's launched to the masses, which I'm sure it will be because it sounds like an amazing piece of tip, pick me piece of kit, I nearly said tit, <laughs> then it's going to mean that visual brands like makeup products, etc., don't have to invest into pricey technology in order for consumers to see what that particular item would look like on them before they buy it. So that's amazing. Keep your eye out for that if it's relevant for your business. Now, Here's the thing that I get asked the most about the recent Facebook changes to the way you use your personal profile page to build a business. People are really freaking out about the fact that Facebook are quite openly stated now that they are going to be encouraging people to not use their personal profile for business, to use their business page only for that, and people that are seen to be doing anything else run the risk of being banned or put in Facebook jail. And people are freaking out about this and the question I get asked the most is, will I be banned from Facebook if I'm using my personal profile to promote my business? The answer is yes, if you don't do it properly. So let's look at what properly looks like because it, what it doesn't mean is that you've got to give up on your personal profile, not use that for business purpose at all and put everything on your business page and go back to posting about your kids and dogs and what you're having for your dinner on Facebook. That is not true. Now, there's a lot of focus on bringing Facebook back to basics, back to what it was originally designed for when it comes to your personal page. Facebook was originally designed for people to stay in contact with each other, to build communities of people that have known each other for a while and stay in contact through personal profiles, or to build new communities of like-minded people that have a shared interest in something. A place where people can interact, get news, ideas, catch up on 
big events that are going on in people's lives and be able to stay in contact with people that it would be difficult to stay in contact with if Facebook didn't exist. That's what Facebook is meant to be about when it comes to our personal profile. So everything that Facebook change and are changing recently are going to be in line with that. Now, naturally, if Facebook flag you using your business to promote products all the time and links to buy now landing pages, they're going to flag that and you're going to find yourself in Facebook jail or potentially banned from using Facebook. And the risk of that is huge, but also the cost to you and your business is massive. So we wanna make sure we're doing things right. So here's what to do and what not to do to avoid getting into a situation where you find yourself in Facebook jail, which effectively means suspended from using your account. Let's start with what not to do. Let's start there. So the first thing not to do is don't post products or sales links, buy now things, on your personal profile very often. It's not to say don't do it at all, it's saying don't do it very often. That's really, really important. Now, these are gonna get flagged if you're repeatedly doing this. You're gonna get flagged as somebody that is using their personal profile for business purposes you will have warnings about that. If you don't adhere to those warnings, you will then be put into Facebook jail and potentially banned from using your Facebook personal page, which is a ridiculous hazard to your business. It's one that you want to avoid. Now, the great thing about this is this particular guideline is helping you to grow your business in the right way. Because actually, posting buy this, buy that, join this, join that all over your personal profile isn't helping you to build a business. It alienates the people that are watching you, people switch off from it, nobody likes to be sold to. So it's actually guiding you to build your business in a much better way, through attraction marketing, through adding valuable content to the people that are watching you, your audience, so that they begin to know, like, and trust you, and then inbox you asking how to work with you, how to utilize your services, based on the value that you're putting out there, based on the content that you're putting out there. That's what's important on your personal page. If you're confused about what content to put out there to generate that interest in you, to be no liked and trusted by your ideal client, then you can follow some of my earlier trainings on YouTube, but you can also pop across to my personal profile on Facebook, which is just by searching Michelle Stonehill, and watch some of the live training videos that I do on there that talks lots about this stuff. Number two, don't add people who you don't know just to increase your network. This is not a smart move. First of all, because that's not adding value or building relationships and communities on Facebook. It's actually just sitting behind a screen, serial adding people, so that you look like you've got loads of friends and followers, when in actual fact, those people aren't engaged in your work and they're not following what you do with interest. It's not about the quantity of followers and friends that you have on Facebook, it's about the quality of engagement and the way people feel when they see your posts. It's about the journey that you take people on using your Facebook. If you go out there adding people, going into the people you might know and then their friends list and serial adding people just to connect and expand your network, if enough people say no to that friend request, then you're gonna land yourself in Facebook jail or maybe even see yourself banned from Facebook because it's seen as spammy and it's seen as a little bit dodgy. So you absolutely don't wanna be doing that. What you wanna be doing is getting your ideal clients adding you as a friend because they've seen the value that you're adding in other ways. Maybe it's a live video that you're doing on a regular occasion. Every time somebody likes, shares, comments on that, other people are seeing it show up in their newsfeed. Therefore, people will start to add you and follow you. Maybe you're showing up in groups on Facebook where your ideal clients are hanging out and adding value. So people are gonna to wanna to connect with you, become your friend, and then they're actually engaged in what you do. It's much a stronger strategy and a smart strategy to have people coming to you, friend requesting you because they value you, than it is you going out, sending out loads of friend requests to people that you don't know, and you don't even know if they your ideal client yet. Next point on what not to do. Don't inbox people with spammy product or service messages. This is a big no-no and it will definitely be something that will land you in Facebook jail or ban from Facebook. 
It will flag up on Facebook if you're sending out copy and pasted messages to your friends. It will flag as spam and you'll have to suffer the consequences of that. But it's also not smart business. So if you're having a big push on a particular product, a big campaign or a particular service, then there are much better ways to promote that and to get people buying from you than inboxing somebody with a copy and paste message saying, would you be interested in X, Y, Z? Again, this isn't smart. Facebook knows it irritates people. That's why they don't want you to do it. So they're guiding you in how to build your business. And we should be really grateful for that rather than seeing them as the enemy or fearing the changes that they bring into place. They're always brought into place to give your consumer a more positive experience. Therefore, they're always guiding you on how to do that. So what you don't want to be doing is thinking, amazing, I've got this new launch date in mind for a new product or service that I'm going to be pushing, I'll go and message everybody on my Facebook and see if they're interested. It's bad business, it's not smart, you want people coming to you. So it goes back to attraction marketing and how you show up, what you're posting about consistently, how much value you're adding, that's what's going to make people want to buy from you, to pay you back for the ways, all the ways that you've helped them in your content previously. Okay, let's look at the do's, the things to do to um, generate business from your personal profile without breaching the guidelines that Facebook have in place for you in the new changes. Number one, grow a community of followers that follow you because they get value from what you have to say, because they get value from the things that you offer in your content, in your posts, in your live videos. It's about give, 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 give. That's how to build a really strong business using Facebook. Number two, be visible. Be ridiculously visible in content and value though. There's no point in showing up and doing an awesome post that adds value to your ideal client one day and then doing nothing for three, five days, six weeks because they don't remember you. And by the time they're looking to work with somebody or take a service from somebody, you aren't the first person that they think about. So it's about visibility. Your personal profile gives you the best chance of being visible because the algorithm means that when you post, all of your friends see that post. On a business page, a very small percentage of the people that like your page actually see what you're posting. So your personal profile is where it's at for that stuff, but it's got to be the right content. And again, if you're not sure what that looks like, feel free to reach out to me and we can talk about that. Feel free to have a look at my Facebook and some of the other trainings that I do on there that will help you with that. The next thing is share stories. Share stories, share trainings, share testimonials of people that you've helped with your service. Don't sell or don't share sales pitches. That's not what's what that's not what's going to grow your business on your personal profile. It's not what people are hanging out there to see, and it's not what they'll keep visiting your profile to look at. The bottom line is Facebook are helping you to do your job as a business owner much better and to give your ideal clients a much better experience when you show up in their newsfeed. It's going to be showing up in the right way with what they want to see, which is your goal just as much as it is Facebook's goal. So here's my call to action on this video. Now, let's say I was doing this video on a live video on Facebook. This is how I would be approaching a call to action off the back of the training that I've just given you. So I want to role model this for you so that the point really lands for you. Now, my call to action for this video is if you want to explore getting on my waiting list to work with me as your coach in my 12 month mentorship program, which is the Women's Wealth Accelerator. And the reason it's a waiting list is because I don't have places available at the moment. I have about 150 applicants for every one place I have available when the doors open. So it goes nuts. This is an opportunity for you to get on a waiting list so that you get in the door first before those 150 applicants come in. If you would like to explore that and be mentored by me for 12 months, then I'm going to drop a link on this Facebook Live in the comments. Not in the header of the Facebook Live, but in the comments so that you can get your hands on an application form to work with me or at least have a chat so we can explore whether it's right for you. If you're watching this on YouTube, then the link will be below this video. Now, 
only apply for a call with me to talk about this if you're a female entrepreneur that is a service-based entrepreneur running an online business and who is absolutely committed to taking their business to multiple six figures or seven figures and is ready to do that but ready to invest in themselves financially as well because this is a premium level coaching program for a premium level entrepreneur. My name is Michelle Stonehill. Thank you so much for watching my training today on Facebook Changes. I hope you feel more confident and more secure in that everything Facebook does going forward is there to serve you. But also it's about understanding the changes and not fearing the changes. I hope that was helpful.